How to choose and grow succulents. The majority of us can't grow aeoniums year-round, in the garden. Don't let that stop you from enjoying them, though. Although they have the familiar rosettes of hens and chicks, these quirky succulents are so waxy and shiny, they almost look artificial. In warm climates, they can grow into shrubs. Just imagine coming across a hens and chicks at eye level. You may be familiar with the giant agave americana, with its dangerous, serrated leaves. It's impressive, but not suited to most gardens. There are better choices among the dozens of agave species. There are even some that can tolerate freezing temperatures. With about 350 species in this genus, there's a lot of variety. Jade plants, Crassula ovata, Sin, C, Argentia and C. portulaca are probably the most familiar, but there are also the stacked types, Crassula perforata, that look a little like paper chenet. Colors range from deep green to creams and yellows, silvery gray and shade of red. Another succulent that forms flower-like rosettes atop long stalks. Echeveria resembles hens and chicks and can be very ornamental. The leaves are more delicate than they appear and can be easily injured in garden beds. They are perfect for containers and hypertufa. This is a large genus with a great deal of variety. Not all euphorbia are succulents but they do all have a milky sap that can be irritating. Be careful about rubbing your eyes after collecting seeds. So many of us only know these Kalanchoe as houseplants, forced into bloom at the florists. There are several hybrids with different forms, but all have flowers in clear, bright colors. Kalanchoe blosfeldiana is one of the most readily available. It can do quite well indoors but has the annoying habit of growing long and gangly and not wanting to flower again. When that happens, take a few cuttings and start over. It is frost tender. There are about 100 species of Lampranthus, succulents plants from South Africa. They have bright colored daisy-like flowers. The best known is the ice plant, Lampranthus multiradiatus. These look best masked and where they are hardy, they make a great ground cover or turf alternative, although I wouldn't walk on them. They are very forgiving. If you forget to water them, they just kept on blooming. The tall sedums, like Autumn Joy, are wonderful showy, drought-tolerant plants. Most bloom in late summer but look great for weeks as their broccoli-like flowers fill out. Even after blooming, the flowers just deepen in color and continue putting on a show. The creeping and trailing varieties have long been used in rock gardens and as ground covers. And they will cover ground very quickly. They have star-shaped blooms during the summer and are less attractive to deer than the tall varieties. You may see rabbits munching on them, though, probably for the water. Many varieties are extremely cold-hardy. Hen and chicks have made a huge comeback. I remember them in my grandmother's garden and thought they were interesting, but not real flowers. I have become a total convert and enjoy spotting them tucked in throughout others' gardens. This is an odd group of plants, with bizarre shapes. The candle plants, Senecio articulatus, looks more like fingers, to me. Senecio talanoids var, mandralisci, blue fingers, is icy blue-gray and these fingers are pointed. Then there's the perfectly charming golden groundsel, Senecio aureus, a ground cover with bright yellow, daisy-like flowers atop base rosettes. It's also hardy down to USDA Zone 4. Senecio raulianus, string of beads or string of pearls, looks more like a string of peas, but whatever it's called, it's striking. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more interesting videos. And please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm.